Hey guys, this is Doug with FellowshipOfTheMartyrs.com. I'm uh, making a video um, coming to you here from Liberty, Missouri again uh, in my room tonight. It's about midnight. Finally slowing down for the day. We got a brother drove in from Alaska to see us. We've got people here from uh, Florida and Texas, New Jersey, and Latvia, and... Uh, all over. God continues to roll. It's getting hard for me to make videos as often as I would like. Um, I know that there's a bunch um, stored up that need to be made that have been getting kind of put off. And uh, especially in response to requests that people have sent in about specific topics that they want covered. Um, I took about a week off and during the Feast of Tabernacles and just kind of stayed in my room and prayed and fasted, finished a, a book about the dad filter that's going to be available on the website soon. As soon as we get the cover done, um, prove it one more time and then it'll be out there and available. And uh, hopefully the other books will all get proofed in the next week or so and be on Amazon.com and on our website where you can order them. Uh, and uh, anyway... The thing that um, I was really looking for uh, some direction from the Lord during the week that I took off and the thing that kept coming up over and over and over is that it's time to really turn up the heat. It's, it's time for a full-on assault. Now, it's probably really long overdue in some ways, but um, I've never gotten permission to go as far as I feel like he's authorizing now. And that means going out again and getting in some pastor's faces and talking to them about the need for unity. Um, the la Three out of the last four Sundays, we've been out holding signs in front of congregations as they were letting out Sunday morning with signs saying, God hates denominations and can we be one body now and pick a team, you know, we're running out of time and stuff like that. And... Uh, this last Sunday, we went to a Pentecostal building and uh, assembly, and they came out and like, hey guys, what are you doing? And we're like, just trying to raise the bar, trying to talk to people about we need to be one, you know, we're part of the Church of Liberty, you're part of the Church of Liberty, we need to act like the Church of Liberty. And he's like, you know all this stuff you're talking about, that's what the pastor preached on this morning. And I'm like, well then, God sent us to be a period at the end of the sermon, and just reinforce it as they're going out the door. And he's like, right on, praise God. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, so they they really, we got a lot of thumbs up from that one. And nobody called the cops on us. And they invited us in, come on in anytime, you know. And pastor gave me a big high five and waved at me as he was leaving. Because the deacon told him I was sent by God to reinforce his message. But maybe he was sent by God to reinforce mine. Anyway, so the thing that's been impressed upon me more than anything is the urgency of the hour. And we've got crews of people that are used to going out door to door. We've, we've had a couple, last couple of months, a contract with a, a company to do door hangers. And that's one way for the guys here to uh, kind of earn their keep and help pay the rent. Um, those that wanted to, volunteered to, went out hanging these advertising on doors and the company paid us $1,000 to do 10,000 addresses and and uh, worked out pretty good for everybody and was a way to pay the rent on one of the townhouses and so and, and for folks to kind of earn their keep a little bit that didn't want to go get or couldn't weren't able to go find regular you know jobs at McDonald's or Walmart or whatever so um, and even for the people just coming in to visit for a weekend, they could go out and help with that too. So, but this month we don't have, uh, one of those cause the company is changing contract, changing something or other, selling out to somebody else or whatever. So we, um, don't have one to do in October, but we got these guys with energy that know how to do it. So we're going to go canvas the whole town and hopefully put a flyer on the door of every house in Liberty. And I've got to get real quiet and get with the Lord and write 
different flyers for different neighborhoods and then we're going to go hit specific zones with either requests for donations and stuff and things we can go recycle or and the message of the city church mixed in there with liberty disaster relief in the pantry and bad things are coming and we need to be one body and if you're not a christian you need jesus and if things are going bump in your house and you need deliverance give us a call and all of it mixed in together and i, I don't know how we got to hit them with one coherent message <laughs> that covers all the different bases or I'm going to prepare like five different flyers and have the guys pray about which house to put which flyer on and let them be led by the Lord as to who needs to hear what message, which is a possibility too. So um, anyway, um, the enemy's been hard at work trying to starve us out, trying to cause problems with the city, um, trying to steal the farm, trying one thing after the other. But I know that what God is doing here is inexorably moving forward that means unavoidably unstoppably moving forward like a giant snowball that's starting to roll and uh, anybody that gets in the way is going to get rolled over so I think it's time for some people to get rolled over um, there were two congregations in this city and I would encourage everybody everywhere okay it's Thursday you got a couple of days to do it two of the congregations in this little town were having Halloween parties and I sent him an email saying, look, I'm part of the body of Christ in this town, and I don't think this is okay. And here's some links to some information, which is readily available on, on YouTube and other places about the, the problems uh, uh, and Christians observing pagan holidays and the roots of Halloween and other holidays. And uh, one of the two sent me back an email saying, uh, we appreciate your concern for us. We are going to immediately delete the word Halloween off of everything. Uh, we just wanted to have some alternative to keep kids out of trouble. Okay, I wasn't questioning their heart. I was questioning, you know, why look like the world. The other one, so far, hasn't uh, shown any sign whatsoever of changing their ways. So we'll probably be out there Sunday night with signs saying, why do you look just like the world? And why do you not understand that Halloween is Satan's holiday? And why do you think this is okay? and whatever else uh, the Lord tells us to put on the signs. And it'll rile them up. And, uh, but we shouldn't, it shouldn't require congressional committees for us to hold the body of Christ accountable. We can do that ourselves. We can just go out and say, you know, do you understand that you're not feeding the poor? you got a $50 million building, and you're not feeding the poor. How does Jesus think this is okay? How can you justify this? in the last days you know uh grab two or three of your friends and just uh make some signs and dial it up and uh, be ready to have the police called on you or whatever uh, some of our guys uh went to a wicca meeting and uh, they were all excited to go and uh nothing like high school college age uh, students, so it was like privates at boot camp that finally get to shoot with live ammo. <laughs> they were all excited, so there was a Wicca meeting, and they decided to go, and they weren't picketing and protesting. They just went in there and loved on them and were real sweet and and prayed silently and disrupted the whole rhythm and flow of the whole thing, and uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And they, they, they riled some things up, and I don't know what kind of pushback we might have, but uh, they were invited back, and they were very sweetly received, and universally uh, felt like it was much less, much less evil than some of the institutional churches they've been thrown out of for doing pretty much nothing but trying to speak truth. So we're going to keep pushing back the darkness, and I think we're going to start an all-out assault, spiritually speaking, on those that are comfy. Whether they're comfy in their, uh, in their paganism or they're comfy in their religionism, um, I think it's time for us to get in their face and say, no, this is not okay. This is not okay. There is a higher way, and you need more Jesus. And offer to show them uh, how to find more Jesus. 
So um, I look forward to uh, seeing what we might rile up as we're coming up on Halloween. October 31st will be seven years. Thanks, Lord. Seven years from uh, the day that the Lord lit the lampstand in Liberty. And uh, we've got a lot of fruit to show for it, I think, all over the world. And, and people coming here, and it doesn't look like revival the way people think of revival. Um, but uh, I know that it's a snowball that continues to roll. And I know that lives are being changed, and people are finding holiness, and people are getting the baptism of fire. And I know that Satan hates it and does everything he can to stop us and hasn't uh, done much more than, uh, than uh, you know, uh, a little uh, pat on the tummy. And uh, occasionally might manage to uh, draw a little bit of blood, but uh, uh, I know that it's time for us to start swinging back. So I'm encouraging you to stop letting demons twist you into a pretzel, for one. Stop being afraid of the bad guys when you are a child of God and have access to the armory of the Lord and the armor and the angels and the weaponry and everything else of heaven and uh, start taking back the ground. In your city, go find the most evil structure you can find, which might be the, the public school superintendent's office. Uh, might be the jail or the courthouse, might be the Masonic Lodge, might be, well, I, I don't know, might be where the witches are all going to dance around a fire on Halloween. Go, pray over it, cover it in the blood of Jesus, and uh, claim it for the kingdom of God, and start pushing back the darkness and seeing what happens. I'll make another video in a minute here. Um, and uh, see, but... I'm trying to keep them short. I just want you to get a sense of the urgency of the hour that we're in. We are running out of time. The Lord told me to tell people, told me, when he first gave me the gift of tongues, first started groaning and, and crying out to him. And I said, why'd you give me this? And he said, because it'll make you focus on your breathing. I'm like, okay. He said, you need to remember that every breath is mine. And if you don't dedicate every breath to me, I might decide that you should stop breathing, like Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 6. Oh, okay. And he said, you need to tell people. They have between this breath and the next breath to dedicate every breath to me. And the day's coming. They're going to have between this heartbeat and the next heartbeat to dedicate every heartbeat to me. So they ought to just go ahead and decide right now. You want me to tell them that? Yeah, you tell them that. So I'm telling you, right now, in the scope of eternity, you have between this breath and the next breath to dedicate every breath to the Lord. And the day's coming. You won't have that kind of luxury. You won't have 60 seconds or 2 minutes or 3 minutes between breaths. You'll have between this heartbeat and the next heartbeat to dedicate every heartbeat to the Lord. And you better mean it. Because he might decide you don't need any more heartbeats or breaths. I want him to come, tie up all the loose ends, and get this over with. It's just getting uglier by the minute. And I think it's happening soon. I don't mean soon in the like next two weeks, you know, Comet Ellen in sort of soon. I mean, they're like, you better get your act together right away because you don't know when you're going to get hit by a bus and tomorrow could be your day soon, but I think we got a handful of years left for the world. But I know my clock's ticking and I'm on a short clock and I got to go 200 miles an hour like my hair was on fire because I know we're running out of time and there's a lot, a lot left to do. And a lot of people that aren't obeying, that aren't in position, that are scared of one thing or another, that won't lay everything down, and, you know, it's not, it's not good. But the Lord's going to have his way if he has to have us go get the wickas because the pastors won't come. Whatever. 
and uh, we'll get them all straightened out, get them all good and shiny, get them loving the Lord, and uh, they'll understand that the battle that we fight is real and that the devil's real and that uh, we need to be armored up and you know anyway uh thanks for listening i'm gonna get this uploaded and um hopefully make another video yet tonight and um uh, god bless you contact us at fotm at fellowship of the if you want to if you want to donate and help what we're doing you can paypal to fotm at fellowship of the martyrs.com uh, if you want one of the books, you can go to cafepress.com slash F-O-T martyrs, F-O-T martyrs, um, cafepress.com slash F-O-T martyrs, and uh, order the books there or download them from the website. We're still rebuilding the website, getting all the videos uploaded, but the books are there, and you should be able to access those now. Thanks for listening. Um, lots more coming soon. Fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. God bless you.